now we have the second part of this reading. We have a 4-6 projector with splenic authority. It's the right angle cross of service. And we have looked already at the basic parts of the chart. What I what stands out to me when I see this chart is this channel, that which is part of the incarnation cross. So this is about correction. Then we also have this channel of leadership, and we have the channel 2010 of awareness in the now. So these are the three channels that we have in this chart. We do have a split. So I would say in a split, it's important to always go to where is my inner authority? The inner authority is to make decisions. And in order to be in harmony in this world, you want to make decision in a, in a process that is correct for you. So it's very important that you come down into your body, into your authority, the splenic authority, the, the sense, the body sense, the intuitive sense in the now. That's where we want to ground you. Super, super important. Uh, and that I believe can sometimes feel a little bit difficult because we have all these red uh, activations. If we would take, if we would only look at the black, there is no activation here. So the mind might not even acknowledge that that's the inner authority somehow. But it, but it is because it's the, the, the red side is in one way more powerful. The mind cannot manipulate it. So it's, it's really there. It's, it's super important. The only completely defined channel is the 2010. So that's probably what you feel that you are. Okay, I mean the now, I'm aware in the now. And either you feel like the world is, is matching that or not matching that. Um, but there, it's important to come down into your true authority. It's important to also feel the, the leadership channel here between the throat and the, and the G. So let's see where we have the 31. We have the 31 in, in Saturn. And then, so that's the stability. That's very interesting. It's the stability is in 31. And then we're going to have the seven in two different places. One is the other Saturn. And then it is the attraction. Okay, so here we already see some interesting. So if you are not grounded in your inner authority, in your root, in your splenic, in your body, probably you're not going to have a lot of access to your attraction, to that sacral sphere in your, in your jinkies. It's here. So that's why it's also super important to be grounded here in the, in the bottom of the chart, in the inner authority, because that's how the attraction and that attraction feel where you go, go, are going to attract other, where you can have that mirroring so that you can lead the army <laughs> forward. And there is something here with the first line in the stability in Saturn that feels like, well, intuitively, I feel like there is this sense again of aloneness, that you're only kind of stable and strong when you're alone. There is, but that's the mind that might think that, because really in the attraction, it's all about the reciprocity with the other. It's all about the passion with the other, the mirroring with the other. That's where the true attraction field is, is laying. So to not kind of, I believe to not, you know, we believe too much in, in this Saturn. Actually here, it speaks about the self-discipline to be a leader. Uh, the first line in the, in the, the sphere of, of stability is about self-discipline. So there is something where maybe you have to have the discipline to feel and be in the body and to also embody leadership. And then, of course, the 2010, it's a, it's, it's a powerful combination together, especially with the 18 and the 58, because it's giving you this awareness in the now where you see everything, nothing kind of passes by you. So you have that incredible discernment, but somehow what your body, what your body wants to do is to be grounded and it wants to, it wants to exemplify leadership. Um, and the question for this reading was about the Venus, how the Venus can inform the purpose. So the, what I want to do before I go into the Venus, I want to just note in this chart that we have five open centers and we have a completely open head, we have a completely open 
ego. So these are places where the soul has already done a lot of work and possibly, you know, it's also where you're going to break through in this life and where you can mirror back to others. So here we have the hamster wheel. You have nothing to prove and you're probably here to reflect back to people. There is nothing to prove. There is also this, this understanding of the psychosis, the doubt and the confusion that is in the world where you are actually here to reflect back that, but, but also be a role model for for inspiration, for inquiry, and for imagination. So those two centers become important when you are deconditioning and you're stepping in more to your true self because you can use them as mirrors. And they, I see that often, very often, people are working with something that has to do with it completely open centers. So maybe you know, being a being a person that that teaches others, that teaches children or other people that there is nothing to prove. There, it, it, life is not a race. We aren't hamsters, or taking people out of of that, of thinking about things that actually don't matter, that actually aren't gonna make you a harmon harmonious and vital, you know, a, a, a person. You know, we see the cross here of 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 service. So. This, this would be a theme to serve through, and this is another theme to serve through. But always remembering as a four six, it has to be what you love. If you're doing something you don't love, it doesn't matter how much you serve, it's never going to be, it's never going to be fulfilling. And especially, I believe, you know, here you don't have a consistent energy. So it's even, it can burn you out even more if you push and do something because you think it's of service, but you actually don't love doing it. So in this chart, it's important to be aware of the not self theme. So thinking about things that don't matter, like being confused. And here is pretending to be certain. You know, maybe you aren't here to do one thing your whole life. There are many different ways. You have this far sightedness. And I know with Tiffany that you are, you know, you're very, you feel this resonance with Sweden and you're studying the language and you feel like living there would be nurturing for you. So here we have the open ashna. It hasn't decided on one thing. It's actually open for experience and it's open for possibilities. And that's the way that you are living out the open ashna. It's not about pretending to be certain. And here, you know, going into that, have to prove, 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 have to, to promise would be the not self here. Here it is to feel what other people feel and trying to fix it. So avoiding conflict and confrontation. And then the open sacral. Yeah, you know, you could tune into other people's defined sacral and go, 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 go. And then you are depleting yourself because you don't have consistent energy. So to be aware of those centers is important because it has to do with, are you going to leave your purpose? That's your question. Well, we're going to look in the gene keys, but here it also has to do with you living from where you have consistent energy in those centers. So you being a splenic, a splenic, authority and you have you have those you have the purpose you know what's worth preserving you have your allies you have your wisdom you know you have you know what it is that you how how it is that you are provoking sometimes but it's all for the sake of of liberation and then you also have the inner stillness like all these are are consistent in you and then here in the other part you have you have a spontaneous expression you, you are here to gather people around you you have the awareness in the now you have the voice and the role of a leader and you have your naturalness this is all what i just said are all the gates channels that are defining you and that's when you live there your purpose it's not actually even something you need to go and find it's something that's already there and then we see what your purpose is your purpose is vitality so that just shows us that if you respect those defined centers and you live in them and you tune into the gift frequency of all the different uh, of all the different gates you are going to have vitality you are going to have that body <laughs> that is anchored in spirit but that also is anchored in all the other in all the other elements in all the other physical uh, correspondences. So here it is about spirit, but it also has the physicality, it has the fluidity, it has the movement, it has the breath, it has the vibration, it has all that. 
And that's how it lives life and takes in. So if we look at it from a Jinky perspective, we are wanting to look then at the, at the Venus and we see the Venus as either a fragmentation of the self or a wholeness of the self. So we can look at these spheres as different, as different component. Here we have spirit, here we have body, here we have emotions, and here we have intellect. Here we have life force, and here we have anchoring. That's the whole Venus sequence. So here in the second line of the core wound, this would be, this would be denial. Um, and that's what the soul came in to become more aware of itself through mirroring with other, through daring to, to have the mirroring with other, through probably devoting itself to the other. Or, you know, the, the lover and the beloved, this is, this is Tantra, the highest, the 29th, the highest, the highest expression of Tantra. So it's not devoting yourself to the other, and then you're not devoting yourself to you. It is where the beloved and the, and the lover become the same organism that's how much the second line how much the fluidity with the second line is like sharing everything it's sharing it's sharing down to the very like bodily um secretions and fluids you know in in a symbolic sense so through daring to be in that de tantric devotion with the other that is how the this imprint this core wound is dissolved we could say and probably when you look back in your family there hasn't been that that true devotion where the beloved then the love there were where there was not no separation and since you didn't have that role modeling as a child you know i, I feel like there wasn't a true liberation and a dynamism and maybe there wasn't so much pleasure either because you inherently know, because this is your vocation, that that devotion is so beautiful and so pleasurable. So when you don't see that, you are not being able to live that dynamic liberation and pleasure that you were here to live as a child. And then in the emotions, where when the child is a little bit older, from seven to 14, there is this feeling like the world isn't really a, a place but where everybody have an open heart there is even meanness and there can be the fear of failure because there we, we needed a liberation we needed playfulness we needed pleasure we needed devotion here and if it wasn't shown from the parents from the caretakers well then the child goes into this emotional place where we have the shadow of the four and the shadow of the 20 of the 32 and then the IQ is how we're trying to solve what we didn't have with our mind. So here we have a quick mind. We have a mind that is very smart. It has the 17 and the 18. It's very discerning. We know that we have the 10 and the 20, which is about awareness in the now. So using that mind that is so strong, being kind of quick um, in order to not feel what went wrong in order to not feel that there is something that's missing, that's something that's denied, that there is a devotion that isn't lived. The, here we have a very intense mind that can go to all different places and can kind of get lost in those Scorpio waters to not have to feel the core wound. Um, and that's also when the, here is where the life force can't flow freely through the spheres. And that's where we would have we wouldn't have that reciprocity in relationships. We wouldn't have that leadership in relationships. So the way to look at this is that we don't want to use the mind to avoid the core wound. We want to include the body, the emotions, and the life force. So here is to parent yourself. Give yourself the liberation and the pleasure that you might not have had like as a child. Here in relationships, you're here to experience relationships where there is a where there is a trust that what worth preserving, you're both preserving, and where there is a kindness, you know, there's a romance in, in the relationships. You don't, you aren't afraid of failing. You aren't afraid of the other per per person's meanness. And then in the life force, you actually want to start to include uh, this sphere as well. 
and and see where can you be more in flow where can you where can you include more of that second drinking it doesn't have to be only an intimacy in the beginning it can be it can be in all kinds of relationship we could say in the beginning but it's important and when you feel that inner guidance when you feel that virtue when you are with the other that's also when when this is going to start to come alive so what we want to do is that we don't want to use the mind to to avoid the core wound we actually want to include the body we want to parent ourselves we want to include the emotional so that we're retraining ourselves that it's safe with emotions and then we're including the life force we're starting to to feel into that natural sacral expression that's in you so when we have spirit body emotions mind and life force that are working together as a wholeness well then the purpose happens of itself that's going to be a vi that's going to be a, a person that's full of vitality and it's also a person that is a role model through the body because there is no fragmentation there is only wholeness and that's what it is to live a life in integrity that's what it is to live a life in love because when you are in harmony when you are whole the heart is open the heart doesn't have to hide. The heart doesn't have to protect itself. So this can seem simple or complicated, but that is the work of, of the Venus. And when we, are, when we are looking at the fragmentation and we're bringing in the parts that don't dare to be alive, that's when, when we have the wholeness and that's when we can anchor in to the purpose and we see here the radiance too it's like an anchoring in in that stillness of the mountain um, and that's where the core stability is and you see so in this chart also how it really connects beautiful to life's work a life a life in integrity where there is a spontaneous expression because you have kinship and community around you and they are they are seeing your expression you're a projector you have the 23 which is individual circuitry the genius of the freak when you are in the right place with the right people they're open with their heart there is nothing to be afraid of there is no expression that is too splenic the 23 has that that spontaneity to it and then life becomes simple it's all about just being present in the now and allow your spleen to kind of tell you what to what to say how to move what to do and that's a deep devotion to life to be completely open in the moment to allow life to come through you so that you can walk in integrity and be a role model that through that role model is serving the humanity and serving uh, the future thank you 